I want to bring in CBS News Transportation Safety Analyst Robert Sumwalt. He is the former chair of the National Transportation Safety Board. Uh, Robert, thank you again for joining us. You know, what stands out to me when you watch this video is it happens so quickly, this massive bridge coming down in just a matter of seconds. Does that tell us anything about what might have led up to this moment? Well, there are some uh, clues from that video. Uh, we noticed that uh, if, if we back it up, and we can't at this point, but uh, the lights of the ship actually flash off. They go off, and then a few seconds later, they come back on. That would indicate uh, a, an electrical power failure. Uh, then we notice black smoke coming out of, out of the smokestack. And so uh, that's telling me that probably the ship's uh, crew is trying to increase the RPMs across the, uh, across the uh, propeller to increase the steering capability of it. So I think we're already getting some clues uh, out of this video. What kind of infrastructure, Robert, exists on this ship that's going to help answer those questions in the days and weeks following? Well, there's a, first of all, you have a surviving crew. So that's uh, one very good resource right there. The ships also have a voyage data recorder, which records the audio of those conversations on the bridge, the ship's bridge, that is. Uh, so it's, you're going to hear the, uh, the investigators will hear the conversations that's going on on the ship's bridge. Uh, we'll also have the voyage data recorder also records various parameters like the, the steering angle of the rudder and things like that. So there, there'll be a lot of information to help piece this back together. And Robert, for people who are just joining us now, I want to walk us through uh, the vessel itself. What do we know about this cargo ship and where was it heading? Good question. I'm not uh, privy to that. I'm really focusing on the investigative details of it, so I don't have that information. Okay, and I just want to sum up again, because we did get this information from Synergy Marine Corp uh, group, that is, that 22 people who were part of that crew, all of them have been accounted for, all of them are safe. Um, Robert, who is leading this investigation and what happens next? Well, uh, the discussions uh, will be going on right now between the NTSB and the Coast Guard to see who will lead the investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, but both of those organizations will actually be involved heavily in this uh, investigation. And let's talk about the location as well, because that's notable. This is the nation's ninth busiest port. Can you talk a bit, Robert, about the impact on the area? There are going to be some major disruptions, I imagine. Yeah, it's hard to tell exactly how long this port will be closed, but you are exactly right. This is going to shut down that port as far as the seaport aspects of it. It still has trucking capability in and out, but uh, the, the vast majority of the containers are moved by, by, uh, by ship, and that's not going to happen for a while. And give us some information, if you have it, on this bridge. Yeah, I don't have a lot of information on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. We know that it's uh, over 50 years old. It's a very historic bridge. Uh, uh, and the other um, um, accesses, are the access across the uh, the uh, the channel there is um, is limited by this bridge, which has now collapsed, mm -hmm. and two tunnels. So this is a key uh, part of the infrastructure. Okay, lots to follow here. And we also know that this is a multi-agency incident. So there are a couple of different teams here who are involved in this effort as well as the investigation. Robert Samalt, thanks so much.